You've heard from a number of speakers uh, who don't have any power to actually affect change the way, in the same way that members of Congress do. And there are some members of Congress who are with us on this issue. And Congressman Dennis Kucinich uh, is, is the leader in trying to achieve peace uh, for this country in the Middle East. Uh, let's hear what Congressman Kucinich has to say. I want to thank all of you for, for your active interest and your commitment to peace. Congress is on the threshold of a momentous decision. <clears throat> if Congress continues to fund the war, the President will have enough money not only to carry the war through the end of his term, but he will also have money that could be used to attack Iran. Uh, this is something that I know has uh, united everyone here. I have uh, long been in contact with uh, people from all over the region, uh, ambassadors, uh, people at the level of na national leaders, um, their cabinets and secretaries, people at the UN, and it's across the board that uh, people of the world agree that an attack on Iran has the potential to precipitate not just a catastrophe, but a cataclysm. Today, I had the opportunity to speak with uh, a friend of mine who's a high-ranking official with the Israeli government. And uh, he said, that, uh, and what, this is what he told me, that he said, we really don't have an interest in attacking Iran. But I told him, I said, you have to understand that your supporters here in this country mm. are sending cues to members of Congress and to people in administration, which indicate that you favor such an attack. And he, you know, he was very aware of that, of course. We all know the history of what's been going on, the incursions that Seymour Hersh wrote about last year, the movement of, uh, of, of Navy personnel and carriers into the region, Patriot missiles, bunker busters into the region, the rest of Iranian diplomats, and then in the last month, the attempt by the administration to insist that the IEDs that are involved in the, uh, the deaths of so many people are somehow linked to Iran. The reason why the administration is asserting that is that the President wants to use a provision of the War of Powers Act that would enable him to declare that in the interest of protecting the troops, he's moving against Iran. The most ominous development in this whole matter came a few days ago when the Appropriations Committee made a decision to take out of the budget of the appropriation a provision that would have required the President to come back to Congress for permission. In effect, what Congress did by, by taking that provision out was to open the door for the President to launch an attack. It was a, it was a disastrous move on the part of congressional leaders. At this very moment, a number of members of Congress, myself included, of course, are working to try to force an opening up of the legislation to reinsert the language that would require the President to come back to Congress. Now, it doesn't follow that just because the President would come back to Congress that Congress uh, would, fa would, would refuse to give him authorization. But we know that process of requiring him coming to Congress would slow things down. At this point, there are no breaks on such a uh, possibility. The entire world community is aware that there is a danger here. 
one of the leading members of the Ambassadorial Corps in a meeting of six ambassadors to the United States 10 days ago, gave this analogy. He said that he was involved in a chess game. And he said that he was interested in, in capturing one of the, a queen. And he moved his piece along the board. And he was about to make a move advancing on the queen when he suddenly understood, he didn't take his finger off, off, off his chess piece, he suddenly understood that if he made the move, he would create a disaster for himself because he wasn't looking at the rest of the board. He was only looking at his piece and the queen. And it was a brilliant analogy because we have not, as a nation, been looking at the rest of the world. <coughs> we think that we can move singularly, and we can't. There's no question that we're in a moment of peril, and it calls for clear thinking and a very sober approach, and a lot of courage, too, because we're going to have to take a stand with everything that we are and everything that we have. Um, the passage of the supplemental, absent a provision that would require the President to come back for approval for an attack on Iran, uh, re will require us to redouble our efforts to raise the issue all over the country. The Iranian government uh, is, does not want this to happen, of course. The, um, uh, and I, I don't believe many members of Congress do. But how do you then explain the removal of that provision? Yes. Who did that? So I, you know, uh, the news analysis suggests that it was uh, members of the uh, Blue Dogs who, who did it at the uh, behest of uh, supporters of a certain country in the region. Uh, so, but, but what we need to do is, you know, stay out of the polarity and focus on what we can do to stop any attack on Iran. I have been working at a diplomatic level in this regard, and I can tell you, the Iranians have made several efforts, well, a comprehensive one three years ago, put all of the um, issues forward, and they were rejected by the administration. This administration has refused any serious diplomatic initiative, and what happened a week ago was dressed up as diplomacy, but not a chance. There have been high-level meetings between the United States and, uh, and Iran for 28 years. And there needs to be that. There needs to be a breakthrough. And so,